Hey everyone, the Magic Adventurer here, and today I'm going to be showing you the top five rides at Epcot. This is the second episode on top five rides in Disney World Parks. If you missed the last one, you can find the link to that episode in the description down below. Number five, Mission Space. Mission Space is a motion simulator ride that will take you through one of two different missions. This ride is the only ride that has two completely different types of simulations based on your comfort level. There is a green side and there's an orange side. The main differences between these two sides are the level of intensity there is, with orange being the much more intense ride. However, I have never had a personal problem on this ride. There are many warnings to possible motion sickness. So I would suggest if this is your very first time, try the green side first then move on to the orange side if you felt comfortable anyways this ride is either a mars mission for the orange side or the earth orbit mission for the green side and you're going to be assigned one of four roles when you get on this ride these roles include navigator pilot commander and engineer each one of these roles will have two different tasks throughout this whole mission, and the mission's task will vary role by role. I won't give any spoilers away here though. This ride was opened on August 15th, 2003, and replaced the previous ride called Horizons, which was closed down about four years prior to the opening of Mission Space. This is a great ride for anyone looking for a good motion simulation and loves space travel. Number four, Spaceship Earth. You may actually recognize this ride from a distance, but may not know that it's actually a ride. That's right, there is something inside that giant photographic sphere that you see everywhere when people talk about Epcot. Spaceship Earth is an Omnimover style dark ride that takes you on an adventure through time. You will learn about things ranging over the span of time, starting all the way back to the first people before communication or riding, and it will take you all the way up to the time of the current communication. This ride is a great experience that will teach you along the way about how communication has changed over time and developed from being able to finally talk to one another all the way up to the first time computers were created. Spaceship Earth does get updated and changed around a lot in order to keep up with the times. And Disney recently announced that this ride will change here in the near future. So make sure you get to see it before it changes here in the next year or so. This ride is something to not miss out on and has been around since the opening of Epcot back on October 1st, 1982. Number three, Soarin' Around the World. Soarin' is a great and beautiful ride that simulates a hang glider tour that goes through different places all around the world, including the Swiss Alps, Greenland, Mount Kilimanjaro, and so much more. This ride will use motion, wind effects, and different smells in order to really create that full immersion into this ride on its 180 degree, 80 foot IMAX screen. Thorn is one of the most recently updated and popular rides here in Epcot, being that it first came to Epcot in 2005, following the great success of the version over in Disneyland. But Thorn in Disney World was closed for refurbishment back in 2016. And it opened with the current version we know today on June 17th, 2016. This ride is almost always busy, ranging anywhere from 30 minutes up to two hours for the wait time. So it's a good choice for that fast pass. This ride is actually mentioned and explained on how it works just a bit in the Imagineering story on Disney Plus if you are interested in learning more. Number two, Pest Track. Test Track has always been a must do for my family and I every time we go to Epcot. This ride is a high speed slot style car where you're in a sim car that will get you through all sorts of car tests such as quick turns, crazy weather conditions, and a top speed test reaching up to 65 miles per hour. Yeah, that's right, 65 miles per hour. However, this ride doesn't really start when you get in the car but instead starts in the queue when you get to create your own custom car design. This part was added to the ride experience back in 2012 as part of a revamp of the ride, and it was a great addition. You will get to create your own crazy concept and assign it to yourself using your magic band. 
you will then scan your magic band again at the touch point just before you get on the ride so you compete with the rest of your party or against your own personal high score throughout the ride. After each test throughout the ride, you will see a screen with everyone's personal car score compared against the other ones in your sim car at the time. Be careful as this ride can range in wait times from 30 minutes to well over two hours, depending on the day. This ride is a must do since it's opening day back on March 17th, 1999. Honorable mention, the seas with Nemo and friends. Nemo may not have made the top five list today, but this is a great ride for all ages. This is another Omnimover style ride that takes you on a journey to find Nemo. One of the best parts of this ride is the technology behind it that makes it look like the animated characters are actually the tanks with real fish. It is such a cool little effect that Disney's come up with to walk you through a story of everyone looking for our little clownfish friend, Nemo. This brings up my next point of why it has made our honorable mention. It's that mini aquarium that Disney has created in this building. Throughout the ride, you will see little windows into the aquarium, but at the end of this ride, when you get off, you will arrive in a small little area with separate little rooms, each with little tanks of different types of fish or other sea creatures. If you and your family are big Nemo fans, or maybe just like fish in general, this one is a great ride for you. Number one, Frozen Ever After. Ah yes, Frozen. Everyone's favorite or most hated songs to get stuck in your head. This boat ride through Arendelle to see all of your favorite Frozen characters ranging from the Trolls to Anna, Elsa, or to Olaf. You will see them all. You will get taken on a little trip through Arendelle to see the winter and summer celebration while experiencing some small drops and even going backwards in the boat. Just be forewarned though, you can get slightly wet on this ride, but once again, it's nothing too crazy. Frozen Ever After is a great ride that seems to always have a crazy wait ranging from 45 minutes up to well over two hours on busy days. Make sure you're getting your fast pass for this ride if it is a must do on your list. Frozen Ever After is one of the newest rides in Epcot since it opened back a few years ago in 2016. This wraps up my top five rides in Epcot. Let me know what you thought down in the comments down below. Were my choices spot on? What did I leave out? Or do you have your own top five? I feel like this top five list will probably be changing over the next year with all the new rides and updates to everything coming out in Epcot. Please like the video if you like it and subscribe to see the next episode of this top five ride series. I'm the Magic Adventurer and I will see you next time.